The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. How great is the wealth given for this church age! And how fruitful this land has to be given for him. A true land, a true crop, and true fruit. With the lips of the fruit to praise in his glory for his work. But this land, which has to be fruitful, has turned out to become a land of wilderness. The place where it has to be dealt with plain-heartedness, with single-mindedness of devotion to Christ, has become a place of pollution. This pollution has been caused, or the hypocritical methods have been caused, truly because of the pastor teacher who has ignored the responsibility laid down upon his shoulders. The land wherewith once it has to be produced with the true fruit of Bible doctrine has become a place of wilderness. Whenever you could try to look into the lives of the believers, what you find, thorns and thistles as the ultima. You don't have any other thing apart from that. And we are not able to understand what is the exact truth of information, what we are going through. And this is what, dear brethren, we are facing today in this church age. The things that are happening around, the things that we are dealing around, is purely the failure on the work of the pastor teacher not to know, not to tell the exact truth of Bible doctrine. Since the people they have rejected the truth and they have got into consideration those things which should have been a true truth, a true crop, a true mind of people who could be to the praise of His glory and His grace have cost it the much variegated pollution for their lust patterns to be fulfilled. It is a terrible thing to disturb God's people or the flock which has been given under our care, the things pertaining to us. They are like a flock of sheep which has to be fed upon the good pastures of the word of the Lord. But alas, today, there are many, instead of feeding the sheep with the green pastures because they themselves do not have the good word of the Lord to be fed, and they have become, rather than keeping the green pastures for the sheep, they are disturbing them for the sake of penance, our guilt consciousness, our XYZ things. Dear brethren, why is it that you are coming to the ministry today? Is the ministry for you all because for the sake of your lust patterns to be fulfilled? Is the ministry for you all purely to pollute God's kingdom? Yes, if you are not exegeting the word of the Lord, you are polluting God's kingdom. And how is it that you have been polluting to God's kingdom, dear brethren? This has been done just because of the truth 
that they are going around because of the things they are facing around, because of the things which for their powerless, approbation lust, and for their survival in this earth, they are coming around. Do you know how easy it is to survive in this ministry? Go to a person who is in a village and tell to him that I have been a pastor in the fear of God. Those poor people will give that he is a pastor and we need to feed him. We need to take care of him. And they provide them from their menial food an offering for this pastor. And this pastor is happy, enjoying about that. Now he's concerned about the true spiritual care. Now he's concerned about the true shepherd care. And rather this man, they have come around with such kind of a stupid thoughts that never in their life will they understand what it is they have disturbed God's people. God's people are easily disturbed for what? They are being disturbed for only one single thing, without giving them proper doctrine. The people are destroyed for what? Without having true knowledge of the word of Christ. That is what we find today in the pulpits. Why there are no enough men to handle this word of the Lord accurately? Because they are not interested for God's glory. They are not interested to honor his word above his name. But rather they are interested to make wilderness this unique spiritual life. They are interested to make pollution of hypocritical methods to loot them and to take charge of destroying their unique spiritual life. This great wealth of escrow blessings, this great wealth of escrow blessings for time as well as for eternity is a great truth. This great truth is what you and I, dear brother, need to understand in this unique dispensation of the church age. This great wealth cannot be looted when you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ earnestly desire for a right and true fellowship with Christ. This great wealth cannot be taken out until and unless you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ try to see the Lord with exegesis in Bible doctrine. Until and unless you take the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using a rebound as your guide, as your mentor, as your truth. If it is not purely the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, never in your lives you will come to know what is the truth. Nor he will come to know what is the purpose. Nor he will come to know what is the reality in Christ. Never. But what is happening today, dear brethren? They want to make the cropland, the fruitful land, into wilderness. Without the mental ministry of light, God, the Holy Spirit, there is no life in them. There is no purpose in them. There is no surveillance in them. And they want to feed upon the poor people, take their money, snatch them out. Give them those things which are not at all right for them. And they want to tell what is the church. Nor they will understand what is the church. The true purpose of the university where the pastor teacher is the dean and every believer being a saint and a professor for Lord, he has to teach to the holy angels or in fact even to the angels which have been fallen out. That is the reason they are not able to understand the manifold wisdom of God and the true purpose why they have been kept alive in this unique dispensation of the church age. That is what it is happening today. That is what it is looking around in the churches today. That is what the people that are looking around for the trends. Instead of feeding them with green pastures, they are not able to understand what it is to feed them. They are feeding them with their hypocritical lies. They are devouring them of their scroll blessings for time. They are not able to get back and concentrate for them to give that desire for the truth, love for God. 
and to have that sort of incredible stability, to have the strength of character in their life over perseverance, motivation, and momentum, and getting back into the happiness of Christ and looking upon to be occupied with Christ. To the praise of His glory in His grace, to take doctrine and to communicate doctrine, they have forsaken the footsteps of doctrine, dear brethren. And why is this? Because of your negligence to have a true love to Christ. Because of your true love towards the Lord which has to be given. And what are you doing ultimately? Rejecting the word of the Lord. Rejecting the word of Christ. Not having to look upon what it is to be fed upon Bible doctrine. And you are happy to be fed upon the useless and worthless things of this earth. Which are no way concerned to look upon the truth. Dear brethren, this is the ultima why we are failing in the church age. But alas, today there are many, instead of feeding the sheep, they are disturbing them. They are not only disturbing them, but rather they are in return disturbing this unique spiritual life of the church age. The great mystery doctrine of the church age, which has been hidden and kept for us in eternity past. But now it has been made manifested to this alakainiketesis, the church age believers who have been termed out as new spiritual species in Christ. Who have been given the equal privilege and equal opportunity. Who have been given the great wealth of all time to be understood. Who have been given them what it is to have in Christ, to be in Christ, to be led in Christ, or to live a life to glorify Lord Jesus Christ in this earth. This great mystery doctrine of the church age, which has been not known to the Old Testament saints. In fact, even this new, dis new dispensation of the church, what we are going through, being indwelt by the Trinity, which has been not been known to the Old Testament times. Rather than telling them the truth, the church being happy in dealing with those things where they think they are right. Dealing with those things, they are absolutely fine. Dealing with those concerns, they think which is absolutely right. Have really leading them for butchering, not leading them to learn the word of the Lord. Everything you find today, nominal. Everything you find today, superficial. Everything you find today, hollow. Chaos and vacancy everywhere you find. Matthiosis is the doctrine that is ruling in the pulpits today. Emotion is the worship they are leading to the Lord. And what it is they are getting again in return? A wilderness instead of fruitful land. And they are getting hypocritical, polluted thoughts rather than the pure word of the Lord which could be bought under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren. And it is a great shame on our part. And it is a great shame that when Apostle Paul tells to us that you don't have knowledge of Christ. If you have been really given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, do you know what it is? The ultima of the truth is to feed them with knowledge and with understanding. The ultima of the truth is that to give them the proper instruction so that you should be pure from your blood so that you have not shown to declare the entire counsel of the Lord. How can you declare the entire counsel of the Lord without exegesis? How can you declare the truth of the depth of the information for perfection and completion in the Lord without isagogical and categorical and the dispensing technique of dispensation so that the word of the Lord could be clearly delineated to them? How is it possible? It's no way and not at all possible, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. We cannot go against anything which Lord God, the Holy Spirit, set, sets us as rules and regulations. Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will take only doctrine as a nutrient for the spiritual growth for the believers. It doesn't take emotion. Emotion will be taken in the millennium. Because Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is present there. They are been showing forth to glory in Christ. But we are here to show forth the character of Christ. And until and unless we learn something, we cannot produce the character of Christ. 
That's why we have doctrine for teaching, for conviction, for correction, and for instruction or training in righteousness so that the word of the Lord can be number one. But what is happening? Nothing. What is happening? A distribution of hypocritical thoughts in the pulpits. Hypocritical methods in approaching that great law. There are those who pass for good shepherds of God's flock who are very often preaching the law like the false teachers in the Galatians and feeding the sheep with the instead of feeding the sheep with the true grace of God. Today once again rituals have come up into the place. No reality of Bible doctrine in the pulpits. Rituals follow baptisms. Do this, do that. Rituals pay penance, pay tithes. Rituals do good works and you can be saved. They are happy doing these stupid things in the pulpits today. Not telling them the grace that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what are the commandments to love that great Lord? Until and unless you exegete them the commandments, what you are going to tell. But rather, instead of that, you want to tell them the great ten commandments, the Decalogue. And you want to tell that this is what you need to follow, you follow it. And you tell that this is what the nominal codes are, you follow it. Now, we have been bounded in love. We have been bounded in truth. We have been called in grace. And that grace should turn out for you to come overcome in love. A sinner, if he has been forgiven by love, do you know what will be the result? He will really pay back. The great example, what we have been noted, written by H.A. Ironside concerning the Queen Elizabeth, the servant whom, he wanted to, whom she wanted to kill the Queen Elizabeth, and she forgave her. And she was the loyal servant for all the days of her life to Queen Elizabeth. She was not Procatus, a traitor, a Prodatus, but rather she was a loyalty. But today what is happening, dear brethren, you know, we the believers of this church age are not true loyalty for Christ. Not royalty, though we are royalty by the second birth commonly given. They are not royalty to Lord. They are not royalty for Christ. Nor they have the loyalty of power so that Lord can enlighten on behalf of them and strengthen them to the praise of His glory and His grace. But they are happy in those things which they feel they are right. They are happy in those things which they feel they are correct. They are happy in those stupid thoughts which they think it is an absolutely status quo for them to grab. All hypocritical methods. When that Queen Elizabeth servant was so loyal when she was being forgiven, even in love when we have been forgiven for our sins, can't we stay loyal to our Lord? How can we stay loyal to our Lord until and unless we know what is the truth that is dealing around, until and unless the pastors feed them into their mind that it is not a land of wilderness, it is a land of crop, it is a land of fruitful land. Until and unless the pastors will come to know we are not here to loot them hypocritically or pollute them with our vain human viewpoint of thoughts, but rather tell them the divine viewpoints of thinking in Christ. Because we have been given this great spiritual phenomena to understand. We have been given this great spiritual phenomena to rightly divide the word of truth under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have been given in this unique dispensation of the church age, the enlightenment ministry, though we are Gentiles. You know how hard it would be for a Jew to give the sacred things to a Gentile. Those who practiced them, they knew very well what it would be. But now, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being constantly bestowed upon both of them, how powerful it is, have you ever known? And you will never happen to know what is the truth until and unless you wake up to reality for the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and search the scriptures diligently for isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of biblical truth. Never you will come to know that until and unless it is purely the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you can be feeding with the true grace of Christ. In today's pulpit, there are many who want to put Ten Commandments for salvation or as a rule of life.
and continuing to tell the saints of God, touch not, taste not, handle not. And we see such and such as a rule. You must not do this. You must not do that. The principle is the same. But it is the law instead of the grace. It is to disturb. It disturbs the flock, but does not feed them. But we are here being given to feed them with the truth, so that when you love the congregation, it is Lord God's ministry through a male believer who has been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to feed them the word of the Lord. Those who disturb God's sheep will have to have the tough judgment at Christ, whoever they may be. But the end result will be the product for the result of the work done by the enemy, which is the chief fallen angel known as Sapa. Anything that obscures you from the word of the Lord, that allures you from truth, that causes you to understand X, Y, Z, rather than the truth is nothing but the pure work of enemy. Today apostasy, because of the rejection of Bible doctrine in the pulpits, is the pure work of Satan. Since it is a devil's world, false teachers being many, people love to allure to that satanic doctrine. Never they want to come back and look for the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of biblical truth in the word. Never they want to understand Bible doctrine. Never they want to give top priority what it is that has been given for us, the theonustas of the Greek. What we are holding in our hand of God breathing process, which could be used for teaching, teaching, teaching. But rather they are happy to think what they are doing is right. The right thing what they're doing is negligence to feed them with the word of the Lord. And this negligence of feeding them with the word of the Lord will cost them so much. It will be very late if they could wake up in the heaven after their death, what they have been done under the tag of pastor teacher to their name. And in fact, even some morons, they do not even know it is pastor teacher together, which is a copulative conjunction followed by the Grand Valley Sharp Rule, but rather they want to tell some are pastors and some are teachers, and these are morons who are telling that to you. It is a pastor teaches. It is one. The both duties belong to one person. And it is not to disturb the flock, but rather to feed the flock. And the feeding of the flock is what you and I have been called to the praise of his glory in your grace. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Either you want to make this crop land or fruitful land into wilderness that is left to you. Because of the no enlightenment of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot say, I cannot do. You are doing it because of your own self without rebound. The enlightenment ministry or the constant indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is permanent, but filling is temporary. When you sin, you lose it and you get back when you rebound. So the enlightenment ministry is possible by using rebound 1 John 1 9 and getting back into fellowship and searching the scriptures diligently is what you will be growing up to the praise of His glory and His grace and not turn out the wilderness and so that the cropland could be turned out to wilderness. And above all, you are not here to be with hypocritical trends, hypocritical methods, hypocritical thoughts. But rather, you are here to tell the truth. You are here to communicate the truth. You are here to tell what exactly is Bible doctrine. Not to be in the hypocritical methods of lies. The sheer arts of theology, what you can find. The emotional based worship services, Christian programs, Christian activisms is not what you have been called. You have been called to tell the truth, dear brethren. And that truth, what we are holding is the infallible and inherent mind of Christ. And this mind of Christ has to be taught dogmatically, emphatically, with authority to tell the world what exactly it is and what it can speak for itself through the method of exegesis, not what you interpret with your human viewpoint. Your viewpoints are not being required. You go and look to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine through the exegesis and tell, let the word speak for itself. You be an instrument of voice, that's it to that word. And to be an instrument of voice, your lips have to be cleaned. Your tongue has to be a, a pen of a describer. And how is that possible? Until and unless you come to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound. Until then, it is no way possible for you. Until then, the zeal of the Lord God, of course, will not devour you, nor people will recognize what is the power of the word which can speak for itself. When the word says you have been confessed, you have been given, forgiven of your sins. You need to go and use 1 John 1 9 in the privacy of your priesthood. Many believers do not even know that they are priests. They are having the royalty of priesthood in this church age. They are not aware that they are having a work of ambassadorship in this church age. Why? Disturbing the flock rather than feeding them the information. They do not even know the 39 absolutes which will be given to each and every believer at the moment of salvation at this church age. 
Why? The pastor also doesn't know that he has 40 absolutes, not just 39. And the one other one is irrevocable because the, the other one is irrevocable whenever they sin, they lose it. And whenever they get, they are not able to understand what is the truth that they can get it. And this is what dear brethren, they are able to not get the truth. They are able to not understand the truth. And this is what the trends that are happening around in this unique dispensation of the church age, rather than the church. So which way, dear brethren, you want to go, you decide. If you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, the ultimate of the duty is not to turn the church into wilderness, not to, change, not to turn the church into polluted realm and loot them of hypocritical standards, but rather turn and tell them the fruit, the good fruit of the land, and give them the uprightness of their heart. When you as a leader follow it, the followers will definitely follow you under the mental ministry of blood, God, the Holy Spirit. When you as a leader do not have that uprightness, how will the followers follow you? So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. With our head bowed, eyes closed, with the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly, you have been told that in the privacy of your soul, if you confess your sins, it is Lord God the Father who shall lead us to know the truth. And whereas for the believers, the marriage is very clear, growing grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine by searching the scriptures diligently. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the marriage is very clear, preach the word, kerosothon lagan, feed the people with knowledge and with understanding, not with sheer, sheer hypocritical methods of sheer rats. And morality is not the criteria, it is Christian virtue criteria, and it is not the worldliness, it is the spirituality in Christ, what we get, only when we confess our sins through 1 John 1 9. And the diamond from my witnesses being the indwelling trinity, Bible in our hands, and the witnesses being our hearers. And if there are no hearers, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. Our duty is to stay upright to the Christ, not to be hypocritical or to use the polluted mind rather than using the pure sincere mind to the praise of his glory in his grace. In the next day we shall continue our discourse. Father, I am grateful for the privilege that thou was going to fellowship with us with thy word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it us a blessing and challenge. Sovereign Lord, Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.